Hello, and here we are, hearing words of wisdom. Let it be in the wisdom factory. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the wisdom factory, a forum for open minded people like you and me who have knowledge, experience, and wisdom to share with the world. I'm Heidi Hörnlein. And I'm Mark Davenport. <laughs> Our topics will cover all areas of human experience. We invite people who not only have interesting things to say about their topics and about their lives, but who have also an evolved perspective on themselves and what they are doing. They are all inspired in contributing to the creation of a better world by helping people to gain a experience in their own life and what they can contribute to resolve the many problems we are facing in this time of history. So you can expect everything from infotainment to serious and deep discussions, from talks and interviews to workshops and in exercises, from a single guest to a whole panel like today, and we will also invite you, our valued viewers, to participate in the live sessions by comments here on the event page and also by joining us afterwards in the green room to ask your questions. And we will post the link afterwards at the end of the show in the event page. And we start off our show with a topic about women and leadership. We have invited today three women who have overcome the female tendency to hold back, stay visible, invisible, invisible, and who let others step up. Uh, they came out and have taken on leadership in their lives and taken a stand for what is really important to them in service to a better world. And Helga Führert and from Vienna, Austria, and Mia Voss from Denver, and Lisa Engels from San Francisco. Uh, the four, and Heidi too. Oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> the, the four range in age from about 40 to 70, and they have ex collectively experienced the whole period uh, of women's liberation from World War II up to right now. Uh, and I'm not going to talk much. Uh, you can find detailed information about all of us and in the details section. So today we're interested in knowing how the relationship of women to career and public leadership has changed over the decades. So I'd like to ask you to present yourself and talk a little about your personal journey as a, as a woman in your generation. Uh, were you encouraged to follow traditional roles or was a professional career and stepping into leadership a real possibility from the beginning for you. And if you had family or children, how did you manage to bring that all together? Let's begin with Monica. You started first on this trip. Yeah. Uh, at the end of World War II, I was just three years old, so uh, it's quite a couple of decades. And um, actually, I only came out being an independent person when I met Heidi around, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but at that time I started not only uh, the magazine of the Integrale Forum, but also uh, the female integral field of consciousness, which brought together women informed about the integral theory, but also uh, coaches, therapists, uh, group leaders. And I hope that these women would uh, sort of empower each other because for me at this age, that was around, I was past 60 then, uh, empowerment of other women was one of the most important factors. And up to that time, uh, I was a housewife, I was a mother, I was a translator. Uh, I met Ken Wilbur, 
and but I never figured out how we could get females and women to the front, in particular in the integral field, because this is rather male dominated. Uh, the men just like their intellectual playground, and <laughs> yeah. Women have a different approach to the integral theory as well. That was my opinion. And so I wanted to put that into practice. And as you may know, Heidi, uh, after a couple of years, all the women sort of, there was not empowerment, but there was the same uh, hierarchy, fight for influence, and as we have in the patriarchy. And I hoped we would get past it being integral, but it wasn't true. So this was my one of the experiences I had uh, bringing women together and trying uh, to create a new field of consciousness. It didn't work at that time, but mm -hmm. somehow I now know what might be different in this. And it was also by communicating with the two of you that I noticed uh, what is still missing and what might help us. Uh, I was just sort of the way Lisa and uh, Mia, uh, the way they just talk as Native Americans, I just envy them because it's a much easier going way of approaching communication than an Austrian or a German would. Uh, and I just love their accents, both of them. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> it's Denver. Well, living in Denver, living in Denver, living in Denver, 1,800 meters high, you must be high all the time. When, we, when I was <laughs> in Denver, it was just uh, unbelievable. I, I felt like meditating all the time and floating through the air. In Vienna, you're just down on earth, and it's a lot, lot harder there. So, well, my uh, marijuana just, is legal here, Monica, so. <laughs> I just <laughs> noticed that you always, when you don't talk, you put on the sign. Is this an etiquette or, or hangout etiquette or I don't know. I just noticed it that you put this, uh, you mute your microphone. Yeah. Yes, you can tell you're hanging out with two hangout hosts because we do we do mute ourselves in case there's any noise in the background. I see, I see, I see. Okay, <laughs> it's great to have a professional there. <laughs> what is that crown you're wearing? <laughs> yes, <Sorry. laughs> it just makes me giggle. It's my token. Uh, it's 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 my shtick, as we like to say here in the states. It's it's what I love to wear. My shtick. That's right. Because in Austria, you wear it when you open a ball. You, you when you <laughs> enter a ballroom, you have these shticks. <laughs> I think I need to come to Austria. What do you think, Heidi? <laughs> mm, that would be great. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot different here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, any more questions, uh, <laughs> my dear host? <laughs> no. I can't hear you. That's a fine introduction. So, hmm. okay. Do we? Do you too? It's oh, the nice we? ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go to the youngest in the group, Lisa. <laughs> well, it, I think it is. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show, you guys. This is awesome. This is the inaugural show of the Wisdom Factory, and. It's amazing to see you guys putting this together as a couple, which is such a beautiful dynamic um, to see to see you guys together um, doing this. So thank you so much for having me here, and it's great to be right next to Mia, who I just got to hang out with in real life for four days and spend the night at your house. Woman, I haven't said thank you to you since I left your house at 6 a.m. in the morning a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't even there. That was very sad. That made me sad. I I, <laughs> but we, but you, uh, you, know, you followed up EFOT in, uh, in the guest room, so it was great to have so many powerful ladies staying at my house. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it is interesting to be having this conversation and having just come off of the Success Summit and having hung out with Mia and Ifat and it was just like 
for me, it was an amazing experience. And but to get to your um, really the question that you're asking up front, um, uh, Heidi and Mark, is you know, for me, I grew up with a divorced mother who had to work two jobs, and I was an only child. And I was what they called in America in the 70s a latchkey kid. Did they have that expression in Europe? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. I, I, was, I was a latchkey kid, so I was very independent, or at least made to be independent um, right away. Like, wake up, nobody home, make your own breakfast, get yourself to school, come home from school, do your homework, nobody home, make dinner by yourself. So I was home alone a lot. I was pretty independent. And um, that coupled with being an only child, coupled with being a triple Aries, um, probably <laughs> makes me extremely and fiercely independent and resistant to anybody ever telling me what I should be doing. <laughs> so I've always had that spirit within me of, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And um, it wasn't that it was nurtured in my family, but it wasn't, um, no one ever told me that I couldn't, so I just did, and I never followed a traditional path for work. I just knew that I didn't want a job like my mom had. She's a nurse. She's getting out of that now. Um, I just knew that I didn't want that for myself and that I wanted something different. And I went to college, and she wanted me to study, get into physical therapy, which I was considering because I love the body and health. And you guys sort of know my background. For those of you who know, health and well being is like my background. But when I realized that that wasn't really what I wanted to do, and I got into personal training and coaching, that was resisted a little bit by my mom, but I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care that she resisted. I was just going to do it anyways. Um, so for me, I never felt like I had anyone telling me that I couldn't. And if someone told me that I couldn't, I didn't really care. <laughs> so that was it's just, and I don't know if that's a, a product of who, of my generation of growing up in the 70s, or if that is part just who I am. Um, and in terms of like going up the the ladder, I just never had I guess that experience was around me, but I never saw it that way. From my perspective, I just always saw myself as an equal with all the men around me. I didn't care. Again, I think maybe that's just part of who I am. I'm like, I don't care. You can't tell me what to do. I'm just gonna do it. So I'm gonna be the best personal trainer here at this facility and I'm going to make as much money as you do and I did and so I just I just I can't answer to I think that maybe that was part of my generation yeah but maybe just part who I am as well I don't know does that really answer your question <laughs> well yes it does and I think it also shows a, a difference in growing up in the 40s and 50s and growing up in the 70s you know? Yeah, I didn't yeah, have that influence of even caregivers around that much. I mean, from the eight, literally from first grade, I was home. I mean, it makes my mom sound like a child abuser, and she's not now these days, right? They say, oh my God, I have a 12 year old. If I were to leave my 12 year old home alone for hours on end, people would say, oh my gosh, that's an abusive mother. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't have happened in the 40s and 50s because there would have been a marriage that would have stayed together no matter what if it was bad or good. Um, but mm -hmm. my mom did what she had to do to to make our family work. Yeah, and it made a big difference for you. Uh, it's a All big right. difference. Yes, it's an enormous difference because I've been married now for 55 years, and we were in the states in the 70s. But all we did was bring up our two children. So, um, yeah, and all these possibilities uh, that were there in the 70s. We, I only noticed that when I came back to Vienna in the 90s. Then sort of it slowly 
uh, dawned on me that there are different options as well. But uh, I was, I'm just, a triple areas, you said? <laughs> Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> I know. What is that? What is that? Oh, well, it's like my sun is in Aries, my moon is in Aries, my Saturn is in Aries, which apparently means whatever. It's a stronger version of Aries. Although my rising is in Pisces, so a lot of people don't peg me initially as an Aries. Um, What's your birthday, sweetie? March twenty seventh. Oh my god, I thought you, mine's March 22nd. Oh my god. So that's why I was like, <laughs> we're both Aries. We are, and I'm, I'm on the cusp, I'm at I'm spring, you know, I'm at like a day after the uh, the vernal um, equinox. Right. So, same thing of it being very close to Pisces. Oh my god, you and I are so similar. <laughs> I was like, true, Aries? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, could you maybe continue then with uh, what it was like for you and what happened along the way? Well, it's, I'm just a blonde version of Lisa. That's all there is to it. <laughs> we, I, I, we're not, I don't think we're that far apart in age. I'm, I'm 49, so I was also grew up in the 70s. But yeah, I just you're listening. I'm, did, did you see me bobbleheading when Lisa was talking? It was awesome. Really. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's uh, this, the 70s, it really was like such a unique time to grow up. So I, I don't know if I... Um, I was never told that I couldn't do it, but I was never told that I could do it. So I think the discussion that we're having really is contingent on a couple different things. One is, yeah, you know, what era were you in? What what part of the, where were you born in the world? So what was that like? And then what were your parents like? Is a huge part of that as well. So I was similar with Lisa, um, although my parents other came in the Midwest and, and the, they were born in the early 40s so you know communication wasn't big back then and I think it was pretty siloed in the 70s too because you know every, nobody was talking about anything nobody talked about one the latchkey thing so same thing for for Lisa like I, I was a bit of a latchkey kid as well I just felt very kind of isolated um, as a kid you know there wasn't social media where everybody was talking about everything so um, it's been interesting as an adult now with social media to talk to people that are my age and see what that experience was like back then because you didn't you didn't share it at all. But um, yeah, I definitely grew up with working parents. But again, I was the th I'm the last of three too, so I'm the kid that they they don't have baby pictures because by the time I showed up, they're like, eh, whatever. You know, there's like a blank spot where the Mia <laughs> pictures were. Um, seriously, but. Uh, <laughs> no, but then I, I came of age, you know, I, I graduated from high school in 83, so it was starting to be a little bit of an empowered time as well, but again, not having a lot of direction and feeling a little rudderless, I really didn't know, um, you know, wh where I was going to, where I was going to go, so I, I, I did start off my career in, as, a, as an insurance agent, I was an insurance agent by the time I was 18, I didn't go to college, I was not encouraged to go to college, and I just happened to get this job when I was in high school, at an insurance agency and that was my first career was in commercial insurance and I, I just absolutely love always gravitated towards these male driven industries because that you know was was at the time too. So but the leadership thing, it just like being an entrepreneur, it was accidental. And I really didn't start even looking at any kind of leadership role until about twelve years ago when I decided for some odd reason I wanted to get into to local politics and I joined my Parks and Rec board um, and that was all men <laughs> and my first version of learning how to lead was when I realized they would all they would all come up with an idea and say yeah Mia why don't you do that and I finally became the president of the board and I was like first rule of thumb you come up with an idea you gotta spearhead it and this was you know me and a bunch of 60 year old guys so <laughs> That was my first foray into it, which really wasn't until I was in my 30s, because I just was not really shown. I saw a lot of leadership women, but Lisa, Lisa, think about like the first woman that we saw in movies and leadership was like Working Girl, mm -hmm. and yeah. that was a that was a um, that wasn't you know complimentary in a way. It always showed women in leadership as ball busters, mm -hmm. and you know out to stomp on other women. So we really didn't have a lot of great role models, at least from a from a social mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And now as you talk about it, Mia, 
I'm thinking back to leadership started to come into my life when I was in my 30s as well. And oddly enough, Heidi, you would be interested to know that how leadership entered my life was through music and my study of music. Very cool. And um, I was uh, worked intensely and, and trained under my teacher. His name is Reinhard Flatischler from Vienna. <laughs> uh, and there's a, a process that he teaches called Takatina, which is a musical process, and it was a very deep and profound process, and I learned that in order to lead people into a deep rhythmic journey required a level of leadership, and in fact, even though this whole program that I studied and spent years and years with this man was about music and learning how to sing and learning how to play instruments, it was more about how to be a good leader and lead a group of people into a journey, into a process, into an experience and get out of our own way, get out of my own way so that I wasn't the leader but that I allowed it to lead mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. um, the circle. And mm -hmm. so that experience of those years of study with this man actually informed how I ended up later showing up not only in my work as a coach but then you know recently is a hangout host in the stuff that I do in hangouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh well thank you. I want to take a little break now just uh, to welcome anybody who joined us late to let everyone know that you're watching the Wisdom Factory. This is our first episode and it's called How Do Women Lead? And we're here today with uh, guests Mia Voss, Lisa Engels, and Monica Kuvit. And me. Yeah. I'm also a woman. <laughs> She's also a gamer. She's going to have to so, elbow in there. We have a lot of Aries in the audience, by the way. <laughs> have you guys what noticed that? that? I, saw, I saw Pamela is an Aries. Was there someone else saying they were Aries? Oh, I thought they, there seemed like there was one more, but maybe it was it was Pamela too. Yeah, she is. That's awesome. What and does I like to see the ram, uh, the, the 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 goat, the the, the, uh, sign, uh, the sign. Your astrological. I still don't understand always everything. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I am talking a little slower, I guess. So, to me, for me, in my uh, childhood, it was clear that I have to go to school because my father has worked himself up out of a, a low social class into um, studying at university. And so we all had to go to university, we should at least. And so it was very encouraged to be in the mental space. And that's, by the way, also why, because I was attracted to Ken Wilber on the mental, on the ideas. And then when I studied, uh, I didn't like the studies which I did. And then my father said, you are only a woman. You better become a teacher. Then it's easier for you to, after the children, to go into the job again. So, you know, for me, <sighs> only a woman, you know. <laughs> so there was really not encouragement. I always liked to sing and uh, I wanted to have lessons, singing lessons. It was not encouraged at all. Mm -hmm. So what was really inside of me, I had slowly to come out of it. And I took over leadership in the moment when I took over a choir to lead. And mm -hmm. what I learned as a solo singer, I, I then could use very well to stand in front of a choir and lead other people. And this was quite a good experience for 15 years. And really into leadership to be visible. We talk mm -hmm. also about visibility, you know, because with the mm -hmm. choir I was still, you know, somewhere. They saw me only from the back in the concerts. Uh, visibility is only in the moment when I decided to, to do these shows, you know, to, mm -hmm. to give up perfectionism and to embrace that I might not always say the right thing or forget something or muddle up something because I was very perfectionist. But in the meantime, I, I have to say I did a whole long journey to integrate um, a little bit both uh, hemispheres because for me singing, learning to sing was a part of it to go away from the hyper, where is it, left, mm -hmm. hyper mental yeah. <laughs> way of living. It, it was my salvation in, in many ways. But 
to be really visible, I think, for me, you know, when we, in the afternoon, I was as nervous as normally I am when I'm a solo singer in a big concert. Yes, so. she was. You really <laughs> were. <laughs> well, with all that technique. <laughs> what, what, I, what, I would, uh, what I really would like to know from Lisa and uh, Mia, um, have you ever considered yourself to be the top or a cornerstone? of whatever you built? Ooh, that's a good question. Lisa, I'm going to let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think it's a, you know what, I'll say, like, ooh, good like, question. I'm like, whew, she's going to go first. She's like, like, no. <laughs> well, well, let me say this. I think it depends on... <laughs> I think it depends on what your, I guess Lisa's, you know, Lisa's gone through a couple iterations just like I have. I think it depends on what you're talking about because right now I wear two different hats. So um, Right now you're wearing a tiara, actually. Right now, <laughs> now I'm either wearing a hard hat or a tiara. <laughs> I, seriously, I either wear a hard hat or a tiara. Um, yeah, but Lisa, you know, you're in. You're it. You're it. <laughs> Um, do you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah. So, do I consider myself at the top or a cornerstone? And that's an interesting question because I don't look at it like that. I have a different perspective that I am. This would be, I guess, sort of the integral, which is I am a unique and a very important piece of the entire puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I contribute to that and so does Mia and so do you Monica and so does Heidi and Mark and without my contribution and me living the truth of that contribution then to some degree the whole suffers in the same way Monica that if you are not living to your fullest unique expression in the whole then the whole suffers so I don't see myself as a top or a cornerstone I see myself as a unique part of the entire whole that's absolutely necessary and needed, um, but no less necessary or no more or less necessary or needed than you or Mia or Heidi or Mark or Christopher or Pamela or anybody else that's here. So that's how I see it. <laughs> that's my perspective. <laughs> and, um, uh, and to loop in on that real quick, I, and I think it can also be that it is on the time or the day. It could be that you are the cornerstone and you're, you, like Lisa being a coach, you've built everybody up, Buttercup, around you, and so you're sort of the cornerstone and somebody else is, is taking the leader. So at the top, it depends on the time. Then other times, you could be teaching something and you're the leader and, you know, and sort of running the show. So I think it, for me, gosh, it could be a couple different times a day. Of, of a different perspective. Flexible. So it's so, flexible. Yeah. Like yeah. that, pop in because this is like so critical that me and I experienced that was so freaking cool at Success Summit. And me and I talked about this several times. Like Jack Canfield never like left the room to take a pee break. He sat there in the front row with Lynn Twist and Michael Beckwith just sitting there watching all the presenters being students That's and right. their own time being up on stage, but yeah. they were just as present as students. So in that way, just to, to point to what you're saying, Mia. Yeah, yeah that absolutely. We did talk about that. I, I thought that was the coolest thing of seeing these leaders. And, and the very cool thing for this whole uh, little trinity foursome we got going on is that Heidi was watching in Italy this whole time while you and I and Ifat mm -hmm. were there live. So mm -hmm. she got to see, I mean, there's something so, syner there's such synergy about that thing. But yes, we saw these leaders and these captains, lions of industry, male and female, that were, I mean, that that for me was a huge learning thing because I watched these people that I've learned from. I, we were literally in the middle of watching them learn as well. So it encouraged me to, one, just never stop learning. And then you can flip and be in different positions for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, obvious that there were many less uh, female uh, speakers there, maybe a quarter, or even less. So I don't know how it was in the audience, but in the, the speakers, I was astonished yeah. that still we women, we have all the possibility to go out, take over leadership, but it's still not 
you know, it doesn't seem to be at the... I think that there's a, maybe a, like, I want to step up and challenge that for a second, Heidi, because um, it was interesting because I had this discussion with T-Bird, who's the woman who played the flute, like, amazing woman, and I had that discussion with her, and she said, um, and it might seem like a, a degraded role or, a, you know, that submissive, submissive role, but the primary people that put that entire thing on were women. It was like mm -hmm. 85 to 90 percent women who who held the space. And I believe that we have to um, honor the fact that as women, we have the capacity to hold a space sometimes a lot better than men. And we have <laughs> roles yeah, right. to, to sure. play in, in that piece. And there were the women, you know, the Barbaras and the Lynns and Sallys on, on stage as well. And I think the time will come when, when we'll see that shift happen, but not to play down the fact, or maybe we just need to know as well that so many women were behind the success of that success summit, in fact, that the success of that success summit probably wouldn't have been a success without the women who were there behind it. Uh, that's that's a great. I, I like that gracious explanation of it because I I felt both sides of it. Lisa being there, and then a little bit of irony on um, on not on a, not it being this equitable amount of males and females. And I don't want to take away too much from the show and have it be about that, but. It's it phrase holding space. I, I do it all the time with animals that I rescue, and we do it with people. And seriously, you're like, I'm just going to hold space for you to get your grounding, right? So mm -hmm. I think that was an excellent way to put it for that summit. Um, I would like to see it a little bit more more equitable, obviously. But I'm also one of those people, and sometimes people agree and don't or d don't agree with it. Is that I don't feel like things need to be all male or all female. I mean, that's why I created the Mia Connect because I love, I think everything is unisex, so I don't need to see it all male or all, you know, all female. I just I love a little bit more of the equitable, um, yeah, just to be a little bit more equitable and even. So what you're saying is um, we are stronger in our feminine qualities to hold the space and to take care, and mm -hmm. we should stay there mainly. But, you know, I find it nice that you told me, Lisa, I didn't know that, that there were the women behind. And this no. is a sort of a bit of a traditional role of women, no? to prepare everything and then stay behind. I, that's <laughs> why I, have, I like how you're putting it, Lisa. It's very gracious of, like, this is the, you know, sometimes it can appear that way, but they were the pillars underneath it, right? Mm. I like that much better. <laughs> it's, yeah. it is a yeah. shift in perspective, and I think... Um, Okay, so there's, and I forget who talked about it um, on stage at the Success Summit, there are male qualities and female qualities, right? And neither of them are very appealing in those lower levels, right, on in the spiral dynamics, which, like, we don't even need, but understanding that there are qualities, both feminine and masculine, yes. that at the lower levels are sort of, like, not that great. And honestly, in the feminine, a lot of people are still stuck in the lower levels of of the feminine and we're ready we are emerging there is an emergence of a new level of feminine and that it's not defined by our gender right um, right you know that it is it, it it exceeds that it's it rises above that so the 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 sooner that we get a uh, move away from um, seeing us as separate defined by our gender right and Move towards an understanding <clears throat> that we can encompass that we encompass both of those, which I think everybody here knows <laughs> that the sooner that we're going to evolve past these inner yes. wounds and hurts and, and mm -hmm. feelings of well, women aren't getting their fair share and, and and men are still there's that glass ceiling. You can choose to see what you want to see, and I choose to see something different. So I just have not in my own personal life, I, I sometimes get a little bit, I'm, I'm curious because my experience is not that I don't feel that 
peace for me, and yet I see it. I, I acknowledge the reality of it, too, out there, and that, that it's still out there. So I'm not saying that I'm ignorant to it or not seeing, but I'm just giving my experience, what my experience is. This is a wonderful experience you had, because for me it was quite different. I always had to fight against men in some way, be better than them, and uh, I always felt sort of... Mm. Yeah, not so and, but you know, strange. And, and, and you these better are social agreements that we make, right? So when we when we agree to change our agreements, our social agreements, I think things can change. Yet, as we know, we're at different levels. So are we sure. really going to be able to get to that right now? But let's think about this. Our social structure is essentially based on agreements, both conscious and unconscious, that we've just said way back in. Uh, you know, at the turn of the century and in the 40s, 50s, 60s, even that the men is the man is the breadwinner. This is just an agreement that we've made socially, and then there was a, a, a push against that, right, in the 60s and 70s, and yet that push yeah, was it, it was actually like an overcorrection, it totally. unfortunately, which, which really did kind of create, you know, the women's love type of thing, and it created a little bit of a chasm. I think exactly. where I did it, it went over. I, and I, I need to give a shout out to Andy Lyons. I just, I love her attitude. If you guys haven't circled her, she's so good about, um, you know, that that she really does sort of nail that down. Of like, there's the, you know, the guys are men are men are get dogged down for being, you know, boys will be boys, and then women, you know, it's like it's like she's trying to. I love that she's try to create a balance of like we're not putting each other down because a lot of times with women in leadership it ends up being that somebody has to be squelched right and again I'm going back to that thing I love this equitable that me being in leadership doesn't mean I've got my foot on somebody else's neck yeah right. exactly reach it well it's <laughs> empowerment again <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Throw us down the mic. <laughs> yeah. But you, are, you, you can empower men as well if you are really a powerful exactly. woman. Exactly. And, and so some of you that, that don't know, one of the things that I do is that with, with this other business that I have with the hard hat, I'm in this what can definitely be a bit of an adversarial position. I go on job sites and tell construction workers what they're doing wrong on this site doesn't over, always go over well. So it's been a balance for me for the last 12 years of learning how to mm -hmm. do fine or be a bitch to get my way but just be very matter of fact no this is this is the for the greater good of everything and it's not always easy and it's not always well accepted <laughs> but it's not you know putting them down it just happens to be this woman that's talking to men doing that thing so it's a balance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy to hear Lisa saying that for her it was never a problem uh, the male uh, female uh, distance for me it was and I do think it is a difference of age I don't know Monica uh, how it was well for you. living living in Denver as I said at the beginning it's easy everything is a lot easier there uh, at the mm -hmm. west on the west coast it's but the rest of the world uh, and in Europe we still have a lot of the rest of the world there and I'm not even thinking about Africa uh, things are a lot different there and uh, when I listen to uh, Lisa it's amazing uh, the way she's sure of herself um, we never were that sure but somehow something in us I mean sitting up there in front of 200 people and just translating and talking to Wilbur and interviewing him it was a sort of trance. I never was afraid. It was just natural to me because that was my creative contribution to the Integrale Forum. Mm -hmm. And uh, to know what kind of creativity you have in yourself. I think this is one of the most important stepping stones for women on every level. I was amazed you talk about the lower level and the higher level. Uh, levels are just, yeah, it's also a construct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, oh, you just said something that I I loved what you said, and now I you oh, crud. <laughs> you don't listen to me. <laughs> oh no, it was about the um, it was about the oh you said something about women and men um, and your experience 
Oh. If, I guess again, we have another session with that because we yeah. are almost at the end. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's okay. okay. I don't need to. <laughs> oh, it's getting down to the end here. But, uh, you know, as, as we uh, approach the end, I'd really like uh, each of you to have a, a moment to say, uh, what is your vision for yourself? What, how, how do you see the rest of your life unfolding here? What's the intention? You know, where are we, where are we going? Uh, what motivates you? What inspires you? Can we take a moment with that, whoever would like to start? Hmm. We're all thinking up something cool to say. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for all of us it is about living in purpose and I love what Monica just said that when she was li when she was in that moment and in purpose the 250 people and the leading that and being with Ken Wilber she was so on target and I, I, I see that for all of us of like just continuing to find out what is the best and highest use of our time and how we're living in purpose and figure it out is live large and have fun and when I'm doing that it, I, it just elevates and brings everybody up around me and that is a, a constantly changing thing of what that looks and smells and feels like but as long as I'm living in purpose then whew, it's all good boom that's it <laughs> wonderful who, who would like to uh, go next well um, just yeah you have to be centered and you have to be in contact with your creative, with your creativity. Uh, I have three grandchildren, and with them, it's natural to uh, be always on edge because they come from such a different. They come from the future, and it's amazing. And I really have to be on my toes to meet them. And at the same time, we really relax and enjoy ourselves. And. Uh, what I do is I try to get their creativity started and their curiosity, and yeah, as long as they are curious, everything's all right. I think we lost our host, <laughs> so we're just going to run the show ourselves. Oh wow, we did lose our host. <laughs> okay. And just so you know, you guys have ten minutes to get back in here, or the show ends, but we're going to end soon anyway. So, <laughs> um, well, while we're waiting for them to get back in, I'll I'll say what my. Uh, Yes, sir. Asking what your intention and your vision is, and um, for me, I guess my intention is just to live as fully and as joyfully as I can, moment by moment, in my unique self-expression. If we're using the whole success summit thing, um, and to live fully and joyfully in that unique self-expression, and to use that unique self-expression to be in service to the awakening of human and social potential. And that's like a really broad, <laughs> like broad thing. I just like went really broad on that. But um, that's that's sort of what I feel like I'm I'm here to do. And they made it in. Oh. It was so great to see, to see like for us to, again to experience that at, at the event. Like just uh, that was totally new for me of all of, of for the success summit, especially the integral wisdom part, and I know you were already sort of diving into it, and then again have Heidi come along on the side with her experience, and then, yeah, to sort of see that change, you know, change for myself and change for you. Yeah, yeah, and in that, and I know we're, oh, you guys are back in. What are, what is Yeah, and I think the camera is stuck on me, by the way, in case people are, like, sick of looking at me. It's because the camera is stuck on me, and I'm trying to look over and make sure the show's running okay, so I apologize if I look like I'm not paying attention. I'm literally just making sure it's all good on this side. <laughs> it takes a village to run these hangouts, people. It does. It takes a village, and it takes a community to just hold the space and understand that these little things happen. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Oh, here they are again. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. I can't understand him. Can you? No. Uh, I guess this is the singing part. I think this is the singing part. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I shout out? I'm going to shout out Pamela Zima. And you guys, have you seen all her fun comments? She's been awesome. Hi, girlfriend. Awesome. She said some comments. 
Oh, Heidi, I think you guys are muted, darling. But they look so cute, don't they? I know, they're, they're such a cute couple. <laughs> <laughs> they really I'm are like cute. really impressed. Okay, you guys, I have to say I'm so impressed with Heidi and Mark because Heidi is actually the one who's dived in like back in last February into Hangouts and she's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to learn this stuff, I don't understand tech, but I'm determined to do this and I'm bringing my husband along with me and like she did it and yeah. like she's so present in this community and contributes <laughs> to this community. Um, Heidi, I don't know if you can hear me or not hear me, but uh, <laughs> it's just wonderful to have you guys here and be a like holding this this type of space for us to yep. have these conversations. So thank yeah, you. Um, uh, Lisa, how long have you been hosting uh, shows like this? And and Mia, how long have you been hosting them? Year and a half. Ah, yeah. Right well, from the beginning. Really Talk about a male dominated industry, right, Lisa? Yeah, you're oh, really wow. a professional. Yeah. Congratulations. Both we're, we're, both we're of you. Up. We're, Very we're impressed. <laughs> we lost Heidi and Mark, but I'm still glad. Oh, they're waving you. at us. Bye. Hi, darlings. We just can't hear oh, you. Oh, here they are. <laughs> we, I don't know if anybody can hear them. No, I can't. <laughs> Time I to pull the plug, you. darlings. Time to pull the plug. Well, <laughs> shall, we, shall we? It's... It's 10.48, and I know they were starting at, at 10, or wanting to end at 10.45. I see them doing the namaste bow out. <laughs> the God I think saying goodbye. Isn't that what she wanted? Did she want to say, bye-bye? How was that? Bye -bye. Oh. Amen. That's what I'm saying. That's my That's my <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Over the decades. So I'd like to ask you to present yourself and talk a little about your personal journey as a as a woman in your generation. Uh, were you encouraged to follow traditional roles or was a professional career and stepping into leadership a real possibility from the beginning for you? And if you had family or children, how did you manage to bring that all together? Let's begin with Monica. You started first on this trip. Yeah. Uh, at the end of World War II, I was just three years old, so uh, it's quite a couple of decades. And um, actually, I only came out being an independent person when I met Heidi around, uh, I don't know how many years ago, but at that time I started not only uh, the magazine of the Integrale Forum, but also uh, the female integral field of consciousness, which brought together women informed about the integral theory, but also uh, coaches, therapists, uh, group leaders. And I hope that these women would uh, sort of empower each other, because for me, at this age, that was around, I was past 60 then, uh, empowerment of other women was one of the most important factors. And up to that time, uh, I was a housewife, I was a mother, I was a translator, uh, I met Ken Wilbur, and, but I never figured out how we could get females and women to the front, in particular in the integral field because this is rather male-dominated. Uh, the men just like their intellectual playground. And, <laughs> yeah, women have a different approach to the integral theory as well. That was my opinion. And so I wanted to put that into practice. And as you may know, Heidi, uh, after a couple of years, all the women sort of, there was not empowerment, but there was the same uh, hierarchy, fight for influence, 
and as we have in the patriarchy. And I hoped we would get past it being integral, but it wasn't true. So this was my one of the experiences I had uh, bringing women together and trying uh, to create a new field of consciousness. It didn't work at that time, but mm -hmm. somehow I now know what might be different in this. And it was also by communicating with the two of you that I noticed uh, what is still missing and what might help us. Uh, I was just sort of the way Lisa and uh, Mia uh, the way they just talk as Native Americans, I just envy them because it's a much easier going way of approaching communication than an Austrian or a German would. Uh, and I just love their accents, both of them. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> it's Denver. Well, living in Denver, living in Denver, 100 1,800 meters high, you must be high all the time. When, we, when I was in Denver, it was just uh, unbelievable. I, I felt like meditating all the time and floating through the air. In Vienna, you're just down on earth, and it's a lot, lot harder there. So, well, my uh, marijuana just, is legal here, Monica, so. <laughs> I just <laughs> noticed that you always, when you don't talk, you put on the sign. Is this an etiquette or, or hangout? etiquette or I don't know I just notice it that you put this uh, you mute your microphone yeah. yes you can tell you're hanging out with two hangout hosts because we do we do mute ourselves in case there's any noise in the background I see I see I see okay <laughs> it's great to have a professional there <laughs> what is that crown you're wearing <laughs> yes Sorry. <laughs> it just makes me giggle. It's my token. Uh, it's 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 my shtick, as we like to say here in the states. It's it's shtick. what I love to wear. My shtick. shtick. That's right. Because in Austria, you wear it when you open a ball. You you when you <laughs> enter a ballroom, you have these shticks. <laughs> I think I need to come to Austria. What do you think, Heidi? <laughs> mm, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot different here. <laughs> okay. So, uh, any more questions? Uh, <laughs> My dear host. No, <laughs> I can't hear you. That's a fine introduction. Um, okay. Shall we? Who do you choose? Oh, the nice like, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go to the youngest in the group, Lisa. <laughs> Well, it, I think it is. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show, you guys. This is awesome. This is the inaugural show of the Wisdom Factory, and it's amazing to see you guys putting this together as a couple, which is such a beautiful dynamic um, to see to see you guys together um, doing this. So thank you so much for anyone telling me that I couldn't, and if someone told me that I couldn't, I didn't really care. <laughs> So that was just, and I don't know if that's a, a product of who, of my generation of growing up in the 70s or if that is part just who I am. Um, and in terms of like going up the, the ladder, I just never had, I guess that experience was around me, but I never saw it that way. From my perspective, I just always saw myself as an equal with all the men around me. I didn't care. Again, I think maybe that's just part of who I am. I'm like, I don't care. You can't tell me what to do. I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to be the best personal trainer here at this facility, and I'm going to make as much money as you do, and I did. And so I just, I just, I can't answer to... I think that maybe that was part of my generation, yeah, but maybe just part who I am as well. I don't know. Does that really answer your question? <laughs> well, yes, it does. And I think it also shows a, a difference in growing up in the 40s and 50s and growing up in the 70s, you know? Yeah, I didn't you know, you have that influence of even 
caregivers around that much. I mean, from the eight, literally from first grade, I was home. I mean, it makes my mom sound like a child abuser, and she's not now these days, right? They say, oh my God, I have a 12 year old. If I were to leave my 12 year old home alone for hours on end, people would say, oh my gosh, that's an abusive mother. <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't have happened in the 40s and 50s because there would have been a marriage that would have stayed together no matter what, if it was bad or good. Um, but mm -hmm. my mom did what she had to do to to make our family work. Yeah, and it made a big difference for you. Uh, it's a All big right. difference, yes. It's an enormous difference because I've been married now for 55 years and we were in the States in the 70s. But all we did was bring up our two children. So, um, yeah, and all these possibilities uh, that were there in the 70s. We, I only noticed that when I came back to Vienna in the 90s. Then sort of it slowly uh, dawned on me that there are different options as well. But uh, I was, I'm just, a triple areas, you said? <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Dad, what is that? Oh, well, it's like my sun is in Aries, my moon is in Aries, my Saturn is in Aries, which apparently means whatever. It's a stronger version of Aries. Although my rising is in Pisces, so a lot of people don't peg me initially as an Aries. Um, for having me here, and it's great to be right next to Mia, who I just got to hang out with in real life for four days and spend the night at your house. Woman, I haven't said thank you to you since I left your house at 6 a.m. in the morning a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so. I wasn't even there. That was very sad. That made me sad. I I, <laughs> <laughs> but we, but you, uh, you know, you followed up Efot in uh, in the guest room. So it was great to have so many powerful ladies staying at my house. Yeah, yeah. And so it, it is interesting to be having this conversation and having just come off of. The Success Summit and having hung out with Mia and Ifat and it was just like for me it was an amazing experience and but to get to your um, really the question that you're asking up front um, uh, Heidi and Mark is you know for me I grew up with a divorced mother who had to work two jobs and I was an only child and I was what they called in America in the 70s a latchkey kid. Did they have that expression in Europe? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, was, mm -hmm. I was a latchkey kid, so I was very independent, or at least made to be independent um, right away. Like, wake up, nobody home, make your own breakfast, get yourself to school, come home from school, do your homework, nobody home, make dinner by yourself. So I was home alone a lot. <laughs> I was pretty independent. and. Um, that coupled with being an only child, coupled with being a triple Aries, um, probably mm -hmm. makes me extremely and fiercely independent and resistant to anybody ever telling me what I should be doing. <laughs> so I've always had that spirit within me of, you're not going to tell me what to do, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And um, it wasn't that it was nurtured in my family, but it wasn't, um, no one ever told me that I couldn't, so I just did, and I never followed a traditional path for work, I just knew that I didn't want a job like my mom had, she's a nurse, she's getting out of that now, um, I just knew that I didn't want that for myself, and that I wanted something different, and I went to college, and she wanted me to study, get into physical therapy, which I was considering because I love the body and health and you guys sort of know my background. For those of you who know, health and well-being is like my background. But when I realized that that wasn't really what I wanted to do and I got into personal training and coaching, that was resisted a little bit by my mom, but I didn't care. <laughs> I didn't care that she resisted. I was just going to do it anyways. Um, so for me, I never felt like I had. Hello, and here we are, hearing words of wisdom. Let it be in the wisdom factory. 
<laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, a forum for open-minded people like you and me who have knowledge, experience and wisdom to share with the world. I'm Heidi Hörnlein. And I'm Mark Davenport. <laughs> Our topics will cover all areas of human experience. We invite people who not only have interesting things to say about their topics and about their lives, but who have also an evolved perspective on themselves and what they are doing. They are all inspired in contributing to the creation of a better world by helping people to gain a better in their own life and what they can contribute to resolve the many problems we are facing in this time of history. So you can expect everything from infotainment to serious and deep discussions, from talks and interviews to workshops and in exercises, from a single guest to a whole panel like today. And we will also invite you, our valued viewers, to participate in the live sessions by comments here on the event page, and also by joining us afterwards in the green room to ask your questions. And we will post the link afterwards at the end of the show in the event page. And we start off our show with a topic about women and leadership. We have invited today three women who have overcome the female tendency to hold back, stay visible, invisible, invisible. and who let others step up. Uh, they came out and have taken on leadership in their lives and taken a stand for what is really important to them in service to a better world. And Helga Führert and, and from Vienna, Austria, and Mia Voss from Denver, and Lisa Engels from San Francisco. Uh, the four, and Heidi too. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Heidi. <laughs> The, the four range in age from about 40 to 70, and they have ex collectively experienced the whole period uh, of women's liberation from World War II up to right now. Uh, and I'm not going to talk much. Uh, you can find detailed information about all of us and in the details section. So today we're interested in knowing how the relationship of women to career and public leadership has changed 